Alright, this is lesson 6.4, the slope-intercept form of the equation for a linear function. Over the next three lessons to complete this unit, what we're going to be looking at is three different equations that we can use to represent a linear function. Of course, today we're looking at the slope-intercept form. The equation of a linear function can be written in the form y equals m, representing your slope, x plus b. Okay. Uh, m, just like I said, is the slope of the line. We know what slope's all about, how much you're going to rise, how much you're going to run or fall and run. And b, this is going to be a little bit new to you, b is going to be, is its y intercept. Okay. So where the graph crosses the, uh, the y-axis. Right? This is the most common uh, equation for um, the uh, finding basically a linear function. Uh, it's really nice to go graph because all you do is you just start with your uh, y-intercept and apply your slope from that point. Okay, so let's go take a look at it. Uh, graph the linear function y equals one-half x plus three. So in order to do this, all you start out with is you're going to try to break this down. So I start out, my slope is one-half, my y-intercept is three. So the first point plot is the one that you know for sure, and that's the y-intercept. So plot the y-intercept, that's b equals to three. So that means I'm going to put a big dot right here at three. So you always, always, always start with your y-intercept. From there, what are you going to do? You're going to use the slope to plot uh, the other points on the line. So I know that the slope is equal to one over two. That means from this y-intercept, I'm going to go up one over two. Okay, And you could keep doing this if you want. Go up one over two up one over two, and you can also go in the opposite direction. You can go down one over two this way, like so. Now the benefit of doing more dots is that it just becomes more accurate. All right? Finally, once you've done all these dots, what you can do is you can draw a nice straight line through it, and we have our line. All right? So that's simply y equals mx plus b. Let's go to example two down here. Example two, we're going kind of backwards, right? They've given you a line, and now what they want you to do is they want you to uh, put the equation in terms of y equals mx plus b. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to figure out some information. Let's try to figure out what my b is equal to, okay? So looking at this graph, I see down here that b is equal to negative four. So if b is equal to negative four, that's good. Next thing I need to do is I need to calculate, so this is kind of like step one, now step two, I need to find the slope. Well, we have experience doing this. I would just try and figure two points that go through lattice points. So if you notice, I have one right here, and I have one right here. In order to we always go from left to right. To get from left to right, I have to go down three units, over two units. So that tells me that my slope is going to be equal to negative three over two, like so. Okay. So finally, if you recall, the equation of our line is y equals mx plus b. In this example, the slope is negative 3 over 2x, and then I'll write my y-intercept as negative 4. Okay? If you're wondering what the x and y represent, right? those are just the ordered pairs. And so the neat thing about this equation of the line is if you actually want to, you could make a table of values here and just put in values for x, and then it'll generate values for y. Okay, let's go take a look at the next page. Example three wants you to go ahead and graph all of these uh, different lines that we have right here, and then state the slope and y-intercept as we do them. Okay, so I'm going to try to do these in uh, in different colors. Uh, the first one here I'll do in red. So I'll identify my slope first. That's one third, and my y-intercept is negative four. So I'll draw my dot at negative four, and from here I just apply my slope. I go up one over three, like so, and like so. That should be enough points to give me a fairly accurate drawing of my graph. So make sure you have a ruler handy for this. I'll make sure I have some rulers in the classroom if you don't have it. Okay, miss the points a little bit, but fairly close. Okay, the next one I'll do in green here. So for this one, my slope, of course, is equal to negative 2, and my y-intercept is equal to 5. So I'll put my dot up here at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. My slope is negative 2, so remember that means it's actually negative 2 over 1, so I'll go down 2 over 1, over 1, like so. And to the best of my ability, we'll try graphing this thing. And I have that graph. Okay. This one's a little bit interesting. This one here I'll do in blue. We have m, my slope is equal to 2 thirds, but notice that there's nothing there for b. 
Well, then what does b have to be? b has to be 0, right? It's just like they're going plus 0 kind of on the edge. So that means we start at 0, 0, and we apply a slope of up 2 over 3. Up 2 over 3, up 2 over 3. Okay, and we'll graph that guy. Notice how my line is going from one side of the graph to the other. We always assume that um, the, the graph goes on forever like so. So I want to make sure that you don't just have a little tiny line segment like that unless it's specifically asking for that. So these lines imply that they go on forever. Uh, the next one here, we just have y equals 7. Well, that's strange. I want you to think of this one as in terms of y equals mx plus b. It actually means since we don't have an x right here, actually maybe I'll do this in a different color. Let's do this one in uh, orange. It actually means that we have this as an equation. It's actually y is equal to 0x plus 7. So what does that mean? That means my slope is equal to 0 and my y-intercept is equal to 7 right here. So this one's kind of interesting because when I go to graph it, uh, that one was at 5, so we're up here at 7. Well, that means I don't rise anything, but I run 1. So you're just going to have a beautiful straight line like so. Okay. Because we have no slope like that. We just have a flat line. Remember, that was the one that was saying that if you were skiing a big white, you'd just be standing kind of completely still. Now the next one. All right, I'll do this one in, uh, I don't know, lime green here. So for this guy. Well, this one's kind of unique, all right, because it's not really in y equals mx plus b. What we know right here is that we have a slope that is equal to something being undefined. All right, the y-intercept, there is no y-intercept. So how are we going to graph this? Well, you actually can graph it, all right. What we would do is we would just come to, uh, this is basically like saying the x-intercept is negative 6. So this is a unique one. We'd have over here at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Draw yourself a dot. We know when something is undefined, it's going to make a vertical line. All right, example four, the equation of a line is y equals 3x plus b. So this time we do not know what b is. No, we do not know our y-intercept. It says determine b when the line passes through the point c at negative 1, 1. So what you could do is you could solve this by um, perhaps using algebra, or you could even use it um, uh, with the graphing method over here on the right-hand side. So I'm going to demonstrate both. Um, some lend themselves uh, in certain situations. So over here, I'll write algebraically. So I'm going to take the equation that I have of y is equal to 3x plus b. But since they tell me that it's going through this lovely order pair at negative 1, 1, I can substitute that information in for x and y, right? This being my x-coordinate, my y-coordinate, like that. So when I do this, I have 1 is equal to negative 3 times, sorry, 3 times negative 1 plus b. When I multiply this, I have negative 3, like so. Now, isolating for b here, I add 3 to both sides. You notice that I get b is equal to 4. So I could say, uh, what is b? b is equal to 4, or the equation of this line is at 3x plus 4. Now I'll show you how you could do it over here um, graphically. Well, I notice that um, I have it going through this point at negative 1, 1. So that's this point right here at c. And since I know what the slope is, the slope is going up 1, 2, 3 over 1, you notice that I found the y-intercept just right there. And so now I could say that um, the y-intercept is equal to 4, just like I did there. Here's the problem. Let's say that my slope wasn't, maybe it was I, I go over 4, up 2, or sorry, uh, up 4, over 2 right here. You wouldn't be able to necessarily see sometimes where it crosses the, um, the y-axis. So this was a unique situation where graphing it was probably the most efficient, but that's not always going to work. Okay? So let's look at another one down here. Example 5 says uh, the equation of the line is y equals mx plus 2. So this time we don't have the slope. They want you to find that. And they tell you it passes through negative 5, 1. So let's try doing this one by graphing first, OK? So by graphing it first, I notice I have this ordered pair at negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 1. And it crosses the, um, the y-axis at 2 right here. Well, if I want to just figure out my slope, right, I see that the graph's going to do something like so. Well, how much do I need to go up? I need to go up 1. I need to run 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that tells me that my slope's going to be equal to 1 fifth. So that's by graphing. I'm um, doing this algebraically over here. We have y is equal to mx plus 2. Again, I'm missing my m, my slope. So I'm going to substitute in this negative 5, 1. 1 goes in for my y. Negative 5 goes in for my x, like so. 
So simplifying this, I have 1 is equal to negative 5m plus 2. Subtracting 2 from both sides, I have negative 1 is equal to negative 5 over m. Dividing by negative 5, I get 1 fifth once the two negatives cancel out. Okay? So the equation of this line, of course, is y is equal to 1 fifth x plus 2. Those are two different examples. Those are really common ones. I find that those ones specifically, though, give students uh, a little bit of grief. Okay. Last one I have for you is a uh, kind of a word problem. Um, it says, many relationships used in everyday industries, such as business, science, and medicine, can be represented by linear functions. And so we're going to look at, uh, at one of those. Okay. So the graph below describes the cost to rent a car. They first want you to figure out the um, dependent and independent variable. So your dependent variable is always going to be on this axis. So in this circumstance, it is cost, represented in terms of money, dollars. My independent variable is always going to be down here. It is distance. And in this circumstance, it's represented in terms of kilometers. Okay. And the next thing they ask is, according to the graph, what is the slope? So if we want to find the slope, I would just try to pick two points across that nice lattice region here. So this point and this point. How much do you have to rise? Well, these are going up by increments of 20, so I'll go up 20 over, it looks like, 100. So I have 20 over 100. And that means that when you reduce this, you have, I can buy, divide both those by 20, you get 1 fifth. So slope is up 1 over 5. So essentially, what does that mean? Well, it represents, if you have 1 over 5, the 1 was my cost, so that means um, for $1, you can go 5 kilometers. Okay. According to the graph, what is the y-intercept? Well, that's this point right here. So we're just making sure we can interpret these graphs. That tells me that we have a y-intercept of 60, it looks like. What does that represent? Well, think about this one. We've actually talked about one like this kind of in class when you have a rental car. It's saying that they don't care how far you drive. As soon as you go and rent this car, it doesn't matter. You, before you even pull out of the rental car driveway, they're going to charge you that certain amount of money. So that represents your initial cost. So the initial cost for renting this car is... $60. And then what they're going to do is they're going to charge you a rate depending on how far you drive it. Okay. So what is the equation of this line in, uh, in slope-intercept form? Remember, slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. Well, we know that my slope is 1 fifth, and we know that my y-intercept is 60. So we have uh, my equation like that. And what's nice about that equation is you can use this to now calculate these last couple questions I'm asking. How much now would it cost to travel 1,000 kilometers? Well, if we look at our graph right here, notice that you can't tell. 1,000 is not on this graph. So this is an example where um, using algebra would be a, a better bet. So I'll just do this question note here. So I'm going to take my equation. Y is equal to 1 fifth. Remember, 1,000 is going to be put in for x because x was the distance like that. So I have 1,000 like so, plus 60. 1 fifth of 1,000 is 200. And so that tells me that this is equal to $260. That's how much it'll cost me if I want to go 1,000 kilometers with this uh, vehicle. Okay. How far did Tim, or sorry, how far did Tom travel if the total car rental was $300? So this time they're telling me what the cost is. That means I'm going to put it in for this y. So I have 300 is equal to 1 fifth x plus 60. And I need to figure out how far I've gone, figure out x. I subtract 60 from both sides. So I have 240 is equal to 1 fifth x. Remember, if you have a fraction like we do right here and you want to try to get rid of it, you multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply this side by 5 and then multiply this side by 5. Those cancel. and You have x is equal to 5 times 240. Well, we know that uh, 5 times the 200 is going to give you 1,000. 5 times 40 is 200. Add those together and you have 1,200 kilometers. So the big thing to, uh, to know in this assignment, or sorry, in this lesson, is that uh, the equation y equals mx plus b is known as the slope-intercept form. It's very useful because you can just start with the y-intercept and then apply your slope from that point. Okay, that concludes this lesson.